Thank you. So, yeah, happy birthday, fine. Mr. Babs. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And with us today, again, we have um, Edfordshire University. Please, can you mute your mic? Let us see your face so people can see you. Um, Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, Mrs. Bolanley. Thank you for joining us. We also have with us today Co Coventry University. That's Mr. Crean. Please let's see, unmute your mic, let people see. Good morning, see. everyone. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, thank you. For Portsmouth, University of Portsmouth, we have Jenny and Chinelo. You're welcome. Please let's see your face and say hi to us and um, unmute your mic. You. Yeah, that's Chinelo. Thank you, thank you. Jenny, can you just say hi? Okay. Good morning. Good, good. Alpha. <laughs> Alpha, we day, we day. Thank you. <laughs> then, who have I missed out? Okay. Then for Kent, Charlie, can you greet us and um, welcome? You're welcome, Charlie. Hi, thank you very much, Amiola. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good nice morning. to see you. Thank you. So we'll be starting off with Mr. Babs as um, one of our first speakers. And um, you have the mic and you have the stage. I can share, I can allow you to share your screen so you can, um, if you want me to share the screen for you. Yes, please, um, that'll be fine. Okay, so you have the board, Mr. Babs. Austin University. Okay. Um, good morning uh, again to everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here um, this morning. Um, basically, um, I'll be speaking to you maybe in just 10 minutes. Um, my name is Babs, like um, Enela said. I'm regional manager for Sub-Saharan Africa for Austin University. Um, what are the key um, Selling point about Aston University that I'd like to share with you um, this morning. Uh, basically, we are located in Birmingham, uh, which is um, the second largest city in the UK. And um, Birmingham is, I would say, is a gateway to connect with many other cities um, in the UK. Uh, the campus is um, located right in the city center. And um, it's just a um, 20 minutes drive from the airport and um, 10 minutes walking distance to the shopping malls. The, um, the biggest Primark shop in the world is located in Bermia at the moment. And um, yes, we are 90 minutes um, away from London and um, direct links to major cities, like I said. Um, in terms of um, ranking and reputation, uh, we are awarded gold for our teaching excellence. Um, just 13 UK universities have that um, ranking. 78% of our research are classified as um, world leading. And we are ranked uh, uh, in the Guardian um, 2020 ranking for first, as first for value added in the UK. Um, for you, and I know you've been interested to, for me to go straight to the point in terms of uh, what we offer you with respect to September 2020 start. Um, in terms of entry criteria for students coming from Bridge House College um, for clearing, uh, we are looking to have um, a reduction of um, maybe 5% for those of you coming with um, foundation results. And then for uh, your A level grades. Yes, uh, we are looking at um, BBB uh, as against, to, as against um, ABB. Uh, on a case by case basis, uh, it's possible that admissions might um, consider BBC. For foundation students, uh, we should be looking at um, 60%. Again, um, if you have students who have um, between 55 and 60 percent, 
please be kind enough to send that student document to us. Uh, we'll be happy to have a look at it. But then for students coming to do um, LHS, Life and Ed Sciences, um, I don't think we'll be able to go below 60% um, um, average score for um, uh, clearing. In terms of um, accommodation, yes, um, accommodation is guaranteed for all international students. Um, at the moment, we still have about um, 750 space um, to be filled. So uh, I don't think they should panic um, with respect to that. In terms of um, scholarship, I'm just trying to uh, make this as fast as possible. I'll just talk on scholarship and placement. So let me, or let me talk about placement. Uh, we are one of the few UK universities who offer one year placement to all uh, international students at undergraduate level. For those coming to do postgraduate um, at a business school and for some courses, uh, within the School of Engineering, they can have the one-year work placements. So um, at the moment, we charge an admin fee of £2,500 for work placements. It's optional if you don't want to, but as much as possible, we encourage all students to uh, take part in the work placement. And uh, the work placement works um, in a number of ways. One, students may choose, uh, they want to do study abroad, a program we've got partners uh, across the globe, whether in the US, in South Africa, in New Zealand, in Australia. So you can go to any of our partner universities to do um, six months study abroad exchange, and then uh, you come back to the UK to do another six months for work placement. Uh, our career services team work closely with um, students right from your year one on campus. We provide you with um, that pastoral support and mentorship, and uh, we help you to develop and build your CV. Uh, each year we run job fairs on campus. Uh, during this time we connect you with potential employers and we develop you. Uh, we expect you to go on a work placement after your second year, and then um, you come back to do your final year. And the experience is that um, when students come back into their final year, they are much more matured. And um, the reason you should take part in the uh, work placement again is uh, it helps you to develop your negotiation skills. It helps you to develop uh, your interaction skills, your communication skills. The world is all about networking and relationship. So during this one year, whether you've gone to um, France um, for study abroad exchange or you've gone to HSBC to work or any um, small organization, you are, you are enriching your CV, you are building that contact which is um, valuable for life. So we expect you to take advantage of that. Um, and um, the next, which is the final thing I'm gonna talk about here because of time, is scholarship. And I know parents uh, will be keen to hear about this. Uh, we have a number of scholarships for uh, all our students, whether you're coming to do UG or PG with us. Um, some of these scholarships uh, deadline um, have closed, um, but the Global Excellence Scholarship is still available and uh, it's automatic. It's between 3,500 to um, 8,000 pounds, I mean 5,000 pounds for the Global Excellence Scholarship. This is still available. You don't need to apply. We award this scholarship based on your grades. Uh, if you finish with um, a grade that is equivalent to maybe 75%, for example, you qualify for the Global Excellence Scholarship of 5,000 pounds. If you have a grade of uh, maybe 60%, you can have the 3,500 pounds. I know some of you might want to ask me if you are going uh, into clearing, and maybe you have 55% and you manage to get a place on our program, I want to assure you, uh, that you'll still be able to get some scholarship. At the moment, um, I'm working with the Director of International to um, roll out a special scholarship, and that should um, be announced um, in the next one week. Uh, the focus of this scholarship is to uh, use this for conversion. So we hope to run this scholarship in the next two months um, leading to September. So uh, regardless of your grade, as long as you have an offer from us and you are a Nigerian student, you'll be able to assess that scholarship. How, what is the award of that scholarship? I cannot tell you now. 
So I want to encourage you to check our website. In the next one week or two, we should make an announcement. Finally, you want to ask, are we going to start in September? Yes, we sent an email to everyone who uh, has an offer uh, from us. Um, it's called the Aston Pledge. Um, and what we pledge to do is number one, your safety is um, of um, uh, paramount interest to us. So for September, we'll be teaching uh, through what we call blended um, learning approach. Um, and this is a mix of online and on-campus um, learning activities. For those of you coming to do engineering or um, uh, life and health science courses, I want to assure you that you have the opportunity to have on-campus um, learning activity. Our labs will still be open for those sorts of um, um, on-campus interaction, of course, putting into consideration social distancing rule. But um, for courses that do not um, require that um, lab um, experience, you may um, join online. And even when you join online, um, you still have the opportunity to have that interaction with um, whether your academics, uh, your colleagues, um, the student services, you still be able to have that support. And uh, we hope to run this within the first term between September to December. Now, if you are there, you say you're not comfortable to travel to the UK, uh, because of um, the pandemic, um, we'll, we are flexible, uh, considering if you go to our website, um, you check our uh, FAQ for coronavirus, uh, we'll, we'll still be able to extend um, your arrival date in, in the UK up to December, if you are starting with us in September. So if you say oh, you want to start online, you are comfortable to connect with us online in Nigeria, you may still um, arrive in December. And then you may, some may have questions that, um, is there a space for them to start in January? Well, at the moment, um, there's no confirmation yet, but we are working to see um, if we can run uh, year one um, business courses in January. Uh, again, that isn't confirmed yet. So uh, by the moment, we'll be starting in September, 21st of September, and um, I'll be looking forward to seeing you and welcoming you to Aston. Thank you, Enola. Okay, thank you, Mr. Babs. Thank you for your presentation. I know parents who would have questions for you would um, signify and uh, probably I would allow them to um, talk via their audio device to speak with you directly. Um, okay. next, thank you for that, Mr. Babs. So next we have, um, uh, oh, should I? invite to speak. Charlie, can you yeah, join us? So the floor is yours, Charlie. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if I can share my screen with you. Apologies, this is always, always the most exciting part of a presentation on Zoom. Just trying to get it set up. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, yeah. so um, really what I'd like to talk about and focus on today um, is what is going to be happening this September that is most likely going to be different to what happened, what's happened all our previous Septembers. Um, just trying to tell you as much as possible about what the university is doing at the moment, how we're preparing for September so that our students can still start. Very, very Charlie, um, Mr. Babs, can you close your, um, stop your share, stop your sharing? You can stop your sharing so Charlie can. Um... Okay, good. Thank you. So Charlie, please, you can continue. Okay, great. Is that you can see uh, the University of Kent presentation there now. Perfect. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the main focus of um, what I'll talk about today. And then obviously we'll have time for people to ask specific questions as well, in case there's anything that I haven't covered or that you'd like more detail about. 
Um, so just a very brief introduction and then we'll go into that for anyone who's not sure or who, for anyone who's thinking about studying in 2021 and hasn't actually made their decisions yet. A little bit about where we are, where the University of Kent is. So you can see on this map here, we actually have a number of different locations. For our undergraduate students, so those students coming to us to do a bachelor's degree, your main base would be in the UK. So it would be either at our Canterbury campus or our Medway campus, depending on which course you choose to take. Canterbury campus is our main campus, it's the largest one, uh, it's where I'm based, it's where we do the majority of our teaching, but we do also teach some other subjects in Medway and we have a full campus with full facilities there. Now you can see that they're both actually quite close to London, Canterbury is less than an hour, Medway is um, only around 35 minutes, so they're very close to London in case you have friends or family there. But you can also see that we have some campuses in mainland Europe, so we teach postgraduate students specifically um, in our centres in Brussels, in Belgium, and also in Paris, in France. So a little bit more about the campus itself. Um, main Canterbury campus, which is where the majority of you would be spending most of your time studying if you come to Kent. Like I said, it's only 55 minutes um, from London by train, so it's very easy to get between the two. You can drive if you want to, you can take buses and things, there are lots of options, but the train is really quick, so it would be my number one recommendation there. Um, the university is a campus university and I think that's also probably quite important when we start talking about what's going to be different this year for our students. The fact that we have a campus set up gives us the ability to control and to protect our students really well because we have oversight of the whole environment that you're living and studying in and we can make sure that everything is set up for you to be as safe as possible and we have very high degree of control over that environment. It's very spacious, um, there aren't lots of high-rise buildings and things, there's lots of green space on our campus. We have um, kind of parks and woodland and things, so you're quite well spread out, you're not really piled in on top of other people and for us that's a real advantage because it means we know that we can move our students in safely and not have people having to be kind of mixed together in really really big groups which at the moment is a real bonus for us. So you can see our teaching is on campus, the accommodation is on campus, social spaces, um, sports facilities, shops, restaurants, cafes, banks, a medical centre, so everything that you need day to day is all within a really easy walking distance of where you'll be staying, where you'll be studying, it's really no more than a 10 minute walk to get to anything on the campus. And from the campus itself, if you want to explore the city of Canterbury, lots of shops, lots of restaurants, lots of things to do, lots of free festivals that you can go to, then it's only a 25 minute walk from the campus to get to the city centre. Um, it's probably also only about a five or 10 minute bus journey, so it's really easy to get around. Canterbury isn't a big city, nothing like Lagos. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite kind of laid back, quite relaxed, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of a calmer pace of life maybe. Um, at Kent we have a really wide range of undergraduate courses you can choose from. So you can see from here, I've just highlighted a few key areas that we offer under humanities, sciences and social sciences, things like law, things like business, psychology, biosciences, computing are all really popular options at Kent. We've got over 400 different undergraduate courses that you can choose from. So we can offer a suitable course to an awful lot of different students. Here's a little bit of an overview of Kent as well. Um, Kent is a large university in the UK, we've got 20,000 students, 15,000 of those are undergraduates. So if you come and study with us, you'll be joining a really big population of students around your age group as well, studying the same kinds of things as you. So lots and lots going on, not just in terms of study opportunities, but in terms of social opportunities as well, and being able to get involved in various different clubs and societies and build some skills outside the classroom, which is really, really important. We have quite a lot of overseas students, so including our European and non-European students, that's around 25% of our student population. Now, what's also really important is a lot of our staff come from overseas, so they understand what it's like transitioning to the UK and coming and studying and working somewhere else. So they're able to really support people very well through that process, and that's really key. 40% of our staff are not British, so you'll be studying and working with people from right around the world who will also be very well placed to support you through coming to university and coming to a different country too. Kent is also a TEF gold institution, so that means that the 
quality of teaching specifically to our undergraduate students is rated as of the highest quality in the UK by a government panel. So always good to know. Accommodation, this is really important too. Um, we guarantee accommodation on the campus for all of our first year undergraduate students. So if you want to live on the campus, then you can. There's quite a right, wide range and choice of different options. You'll have your own room. You can choose if you want your own bathroom as well, if you don't mind sharing. The cost varies depending on which of those options you choose. Also, if you want to have your meals provided for you, there are various options there. Or if you prefer to do your own cooking or source your own food and go to restaurants and things, then you can do that too. It's really very flexible. You have that accommodation over the holidays as well. That's important to note at the moment too, because people are obviously wanting to minimize the amount of travel they do and that kind of air travel. So if you want to stay over the Christmas vacation, if you want to stay over the Easter vacation, then you absolutely can. And the campus is set up so that there are still facilities open to you. We put on special events over Christmas as well for students so that you're not alone on the campus, so that there is a community there and so that you're not missing your family if you're away from home at that time. Now this slide particularly deals with this year, September 2020, and what we're doing differently. This is really what I want to talk about mostly. We are still planning to start studies for students, same date as we always had been. So that is um, an arrival date, nominal arrival date, the 19th and 20th of September. So hopefully some people will be able to join us at that time. Um, that's what the campus is being set up for. That's what our accommodation will be ready for. Now, the week immediately following that is a full week of welcome activities and setting in activities. We're going to be running those most likely in quite a virtual way. So if you're on the campus, you'll still be able to explore the campus um, because all of the buildings will be open. It will just look a little bit different to the way it has before. But if you're not on the campus, then you're not going to miss out on those events. And I think that's really crucial. We're making sure that every step of the induction process you would normally go through can still be replicated if you're starting your studies online, if you're not able to join us for any reason. Now, we're not looking at having a January start date for any of our undergraduate students. We're just looking at a September start date. But if you can't travel or if you don't yet want to travel to the UK and start your studies in person on those dates, you can start your studies online fully online version will be available as long as you do come to the UK to begin your studies as soon as you can. So that's important to realise too. But you can start online so that you're not missing out and so that you're not delaying the start of your studies. We've polled our own students quite extensively and they don't want to delay their studies. That's really key. That's a key message that's come back from them. They want to find a way to still be able to graduate on time so that they can still start looking for jobs and carry on with the other plans that they had. So we're going to be taking a blended teaching program. What that means is that for students who are able to come to us in person, they'll be having some of their lectures, so the larger group sessions online, still delivered by the same lecturers, still in the same environment, but accessible from your laptop, from your iPad, from your phone, even any time that suits you. But you'll still be having small group sessions, practical sessions and lab sessions in person. Now, if you can't join us for the start of term in September, then those sessions will be online. And if they're practical lab sessions, so for example, a biosciences student will be getting to grips with using different kinds of equipment and getting lots of practical experience, we'll just push those sessions back to later in the year. So you're not going to miss out on anything. We've got a lot of different support set up for our international students and people here to answer your questions. That is my job. I'm here to support you, to answer your questions, to help you with your application, answer questions you might have about the visa process, and arriving so we make sure that you've got a named person the whole time that you're at university that you can come to and ask any questions at all all our facilities are still going to be open to students we're just looking at the moment as to how we can offer those to you safely so we have campus we have staff on the campus at the moment even though most of us are working from home actually working out how many students we can have in the lab space how we're going to have people flowing through buildings safe and what we're going to do is we're actually going to be uploading videos and walkthroughs of what the campus looks like for both returning students and new students and staff so that before you even get to the campus you know which ways you should be moving around buildings how you're going to be moving around and how you're going to be staying socially distanced and safe if that's something that we still need to be doing once you arrive 
As I mentioned earlier, campus accommodation is guaranteed for all of our first year students. So if you want that, that's fine. You don't have to worry about where you're going to live. You need to apply for that by the 31st of July. So you've still got plenty of time to do that. But it's also important to know that there's no deposit to pay for that. So you don't have to pay a deposit to confirm your accommodation. At Kent, you don't have to pay a deposit to confirm your place at the university either. We don't actually ask that from you. So you're not financially having to make any commitment. You're just making a firm commitment through your UCAS choices and things. In terms of 2021 and 2022 starts and what to expect, we're very much hoping that things will look a little bit more like they have previously. But what should you be doing if that's when you're thinking of starting university? I'd say you need to be doing research, you need to be looking at your course choices, your location choices, um, and starting thinking, applying nice and early as well. I don't think you should think about this as being a different year, a difficult year. And you also need to know that universities understand a lot of people have had their studies interrupted this year. So we are going to be more flexible in terms of entry requirements and results and things like that than we usually would be. Um, in terms of entry requirements and results, there's a little bit of variation at Kent in terms of what we will accept for various programmes. And that depends on what you want to study. Normally that's between BBB and AAB at A level or in the Bridge House qualification. But clearing is coming up. Clearing will really kick into gear in August. And we do sometimes reduce some of the grade requirements for our students then. So that may be an option for you. Now, if you're coming to an undergraduate degree with us, you don't have to do a separate English language qualification. I imagine what you've already done. You can have an IGCSE English grade C if it's the first language or grade B if it's the second language, or you can have your WIAC grade C6 or above. There is no mandatory requirement to do an IELTS test. So don't let that worry if you don't have that already. If you don't have one of those things, you don't have Y, if you don't have IGCSE, then we are also accepting a number of other online qualifications. We're even running our own Kent English language tests for free for our students. So if you do need to take, but I don't think many, many of our Bridge House students will need to do that. A little bit of information on fees up there, a little bit of information on scholarships available as well. Unfortunately, the International Student Scholarships have now closed and our panel's meeting at the end of this week coming to actually award those scholarships. But we do still have our Academic Excellence Scholarships for A-level students, those automatic awards, students who get AAB in their A-levels or above. A little bit here on the college response that the university is actually coordinating in terms of how we are working with the global community and what we're doing there. Um, we're working on research into vaccines and into understanding how the disease works as well. Infectious diseases are one of the specialisms of the University of Kent. Our School of Bioscience has been very involved recently. We've been assisting local healthcare providers, local hospitals with providing testing facilities by actually providing them with equipment and staff. And we've also been running our 3D printers and things at full pace, um, School of Architecture and School of Engineering and Design to assist local healthcare um, operators with providing protective equipment for their staff too. So we've been trying to also contribute to our community in that way. Just put up this as because I think it's very important to find out what our students say as well. There are lots of resources online and on our website. Um, and there are some resources here as well. So I will make sure that this presentation is forwarded to Eniola. So if anybody wants contact details and doesn't want to scribble these down very quickly, if you want to talk to some current students, you can. We've also got a virtual open day of the campus coming up next Saturday, the 4th of July. We'll be going on from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Nigeria time. So if you want to sign up for that, then you can as well. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Thank you so much for your presentation. And um, I know anyone who would have questions for you would indicate and uh, we probably open the mic for the person after um, all presentations have been done. And um, that would be the procedure. So thank you very much. I welcome Mrs. Bolanle, Ekpoche University, to come in and um, present 
our slides our presentation to our parents and um, participants. Good so, morning, everyone. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I'm just going to briefly introduce myself. And uh, my name is Bolan Lee. I oversee the region for University of Hertfordshire um, in the UK. Um, like my colleagues have done earlier, they actually presented a slide. I'm not a slide person, but I had to quickly um, bump, jump into my email and just bring out my slides. So I'm just going to present it. But I'm more of That's a talking fine. person. I talk about the university and then our selling points and what should, students should expect, not for parents. So I'm going to share my screen now. That's fine. Um, please let me know when you see it. Um, never done okay. This. Okay. I'll let you know. Okay. I think I got it. Yeah, that's can fine. Can you see it? Yes, I can. We can. Okay. So, Good. University of Hertfordshire is. Um, in the UK, which is just 20 min 25 minutes by train from central London. Um, it's a green campus, and this is what I know everybody likes to hear that I'm not a green person, but yes, it's a green campus. Um, we... Why do students want to go to the University of Hertfordshire? We have quality degrees, there are lots of experienced professionals. Um, you make so many friends because it's it's a combination of international students and we have quite a number of international students at the University of Hertfordshire and people can see places around people like to go to London and because we're just um, like a stone throw from London students tend to go over the weekend sometimes they have family so they can travel from London and come to school every day if they want to jump on the train and so that again is an amazing one we're at top 200 universities under 50 years old. Now, I do not like to talk about ranking basically because the reason why I don't talk about ranking is University of Hertfordshire is not a research school. And for taught, we're, we're um, gold for teaching excellence. And that's the highest for undergraduate. And that's what um, any parent should want to know about. So again, we're just uh, top 200 universities under 50 years. It's a Safe, it's a safe university. We're in the east of England. And again, if your children are going to school, you want to be you're, you're mindful of where they're going to stay. And for University of Hertfordshire, we're the second university in the east of, in east of England is the top safest, second safest university. Sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a slide person, so just don't mind how I'm talking now. Um, for work experience, this is undergraduate, so I might not want to talk about work experience for undergraduate, but yes, we, we get lots of graduates, people, uh, we get lots of people get jobs within six months of graduation at the University of Hertfordshire. Um, our campus is eco-friendly and it's been awarded platinum. Um, so I, I spoke about the TEF gold and parents from Oxbridge Bridge House College would really want to talk about or where their students are going, their children are going to, what kind of degrees they're going to get, um, how, how is it rated? And um, Bob said earlier that there are only 15 universities that are rated TEF Gold, and we are one of those universities. We're just 25 minutes from central London by train, so students can come from the university and go to um, the families in England, in London, if they have families in London. Some people don't want to stay on campus, which I do understand. But what I say to students is for the first year, especially when you're doing your first year in the university, just stay on campus. We have wonderful campus um, at the university. So we have scholarship up to 4,000 pounds available to international students. Um, we, of course, students would have to apply for the 4,000, but we have the 1,000 and we have the 2,000 scholarship that students don't need to apply for. We just will award it as long as they're coming from Nigeria. Um, so that's where we are. It's, it's just, we're linked to five, five, um, five airports in England. So 
Again, it's very safe for students. They can come from any airport and get to the university. We have two campuses, the Havland campus and the College Lane campus. And uh, we have award-winning accommodation at the University of Hertfordshire. The school has invested up to 120 million pounds into accommodation. And again, because we are the safest, second safest city in the east of England, students will really, really prefer to stay in accommodation. They're sure that they can go anywhere, anytime. And we have a 24 hours learning resource center so they can go on to, to the library in the middle of the night and they can be sure that they are safe at the university. We have boat and suit accommodation and single accommodation. We have shared apartments. There are lots of accommodation and it's just like five minutes walk from the lecture hall. And that's what our accommodation looks like. So for people who want to share, I always advise students to share accommodation because they get to meet other kind of people they can chat. And if you see there, we have people talking in the lounge. And if you want a single accommodation, it's fine. You have yourself, um, you have everything in your room. So that's our campus. And then we also have off-campus accommodation for people who are willing to go off-campus. But for the yeah, I am not advising students to go off campus accommodation and I'm just going to digress a bit from my, um, from my presentation and really talk about universities. I do the talking, I'm not a presentation person. So um, for this year, University of Hertfordshire, will, um, we're going to be getting students to come on campus in October. Our usual start date is September of 2020, but we've now had to move it to October 26th this year. So it's going to be a combination of blended learning and on-campus learning. So um, parents should not be worried about whether or not their, their word will be able to come on. Um, we're also considering a lot of things, um, the safety of students. We're going to be doing the, we're going to be practicing the social distancing. So very much some students will come to school in a week and the others will come next week while they still do their on-campus. Um, it's whilst they still do their online um, classes. So that again is something that we're looking at. The campuses are clean. There are lots of um, personal protective equipment in school for students. At every point we have, um, we've now made available the hand sanitizer, the face masks for students to use when they come on campus. And so every, I'm so sure that everybody will be fine um, when they come in, September, in October. So we have outstanding campus facilities and we have um, lots of things at the University of Hertfordshire, which includes the Sports Village, um, which has a stadium that is, a, is like a hundred and hundred plus um, acre stadium. Um, we have 25, that, inside the Sports Village, we have the swimming pool, um, we have a surgery, doctor's surgery, we have high street bank, there are lots of things on campus, University of Hertfordshire. One of the things I talk about most is the Learning Resource Center, which is our 20, 24 7 hours library on both campuses. They have Learning College in campus. Um, then we have the forum, which houses lots of things, entertainment for international students um, and for um, home students. And then we have what we call the multi, multicultural um, centers where people can people with different faith can actually practice. We have a whole building for this, for, for this purpose. And that's our, you can see our facilities. who has invested so much in the facilities and um, the local area in Hatfield, um, we have, so because you know, when they're going on to do interviews with us, we ask this kind of questions. And sometimes students come to us and say, oh, but I don't have an idea of a local area. And so we have made it available for students to look at before they go on to do interviews with us. So we have the Galleria outlet, which is just opposite the university. There are lots of restaurants. Um, we have the Hatfield Home House, where we have the childhood home of, um, that's the childhood home of Queen Elizabeth. And then we have St. Alban, which is not too far from the university also. Um, so we have different schools at the university with over 300 programs. Um, we have the School of Engineering and Computer Science, Hertfordshire Business School. We have School of Physics, 
astronomy and mathematics, school of life and medical sciences. We have a school of education. We have a school of law, school of humanities, school of creative arts, and school of health and social work. Now, at the University of Hertfordshire, we practically offer all of the courses, except, of course, medicine to international students. But one of the best sellers for this year has been the School of Health and Social Work, which is um, nursing. Lots of students are coming in to do nursing. So we have child nursing, adult nursing, mental health nursing, um, learning disabilities, and then we have the, um, the core social work. And for this courses, we really do not require English language requirements. Um, with a credit in English, we'll take students except for social work, which requires IELTS at 7.0. Now, because of the COVID, we have decided to create an alternative English requirement for students, which is the Versatan Persons Test. Now, this is done um, at the university. So it's going to be, we will um, invigilate students. We'll give you a code, we'll invigilate you, and then once you get the required grade, you don't need to take IELTS. But for every other course, we're fine with your wife at um, level C6 either your wife or the NECO. If a student who had done IGCSE, we will take um, the IGCSE too. Um, our law school is one of the leading law schools at the University of Hertfordshire, and then it's a direct replica of the Crown Court. Um, we have lots of things that you students can get at the University of Hertfordshire. Our courses is, um, we have lots of courses for the placement year, and I do encourage students who come to take courses with the one-year placement. You could either do the placement or you could do the study abroad. But with the placement, it gives you an opportunity to not just learn, um, but get placed in the industry so that you come out not just with, with class experience, but with industry experience. And that's why all of our, most of our graduates will get jobs within six months of graduation or then continue with their studies. We've got lots of um, industry links, um, which I've now showed here. So most of our students doing the placement year would usually go on to work with any of these um, companies if they want to be placed. They also come to our university and work in hand in hand with the careers department to help students get jobs and how our careers department would help students with how they're going to um, write their CVs, how they're going to do the interviews and all of that. So we are all there to support international students and our student feedback has been top notch. We've, we've continuously got like number one for student satisfaction in the last five years. We're always open, students can always come to us. They, they, we have the open door policies where students will go on to, to any of the lecturers to ask questions. And then they can come to any of us at the international. I for one, I, I'm placed here in Nigeria to represent all international students from Nigeria and Ghana, so they can always get in touch with me. I'm always live on um, Instagram or Facebook, and I put lots of content out there to help students, because sometimes students might not get everything. So I just always encourage them to go to our, um, our pages, our international pages, to find out all those things that they need. And University of Hertfordshire is constantly um, on live sessions on Facebook every day and Instagram, so you can just follow um, at the University of Hertfordshire International. But because we realized that during the pandemic, so many people were at home, they were wondering what they're going to do, whether they're going to continue to go to classes or whether this year will just be over and all of that. So we just quickly embedded that into what we were doing at that time. So we were constantly on student spaces and there were lots of feedback from parents and students. And that's why um, we're, so, we're, we're so determined to come on to study, to recruit for September, October 2020. Um, for students going through UCAS, um, we're doing the clearing at the moment, but you do not need to, if you're coming to University of Hertfordshire, you may not want to apply through UCAS. So it's just like a bonus university. So if you have your foundation or A-levels from Bridge House Collective, for instance, you can send direct application and your lab will get that sorted. So that will be an extra university for you. So you can still get your five, five universities and then just apply to the University of Hertfordshire directly and then we'll take students directly um, rather than going through. So you still have your UCAS, but you have our bonus university and just have it right there. Um, okay, so that's what, so that's our facilities there. We have the, that's what our, 
our um, Crown Court looks like. It's, this is where students will be. And when they are taking classes and they're taking um, examination, they are right there in the, in the Crown Court replica at the university's law building. So this is our law facility. Um, so you can see that we have a full-scale replica court, lower court room. It's, we do the trial and advocacy, which is the moot trials. We call it moot trials in Nigeria. Um, we have the law clinic and the pro bono activities. So for the pro bono activities, for placement, so most of our postgraduate courses with the placement get, you don't need to pay for the placement. And so then get paid for their placement here. Um, but for law, it's pro bono, so it's free. But that, that means that you still get experience. And I, I really encourage students studying law to go on to, um, to take part in the pro bono because it gives you lots of experience. You do this, you go every day. And by the time you are, you are a law graduate, it won't be a problem for you to go on to do um, any of, to go to the courtroom um, upon graduation. So that's our business school. I'm just going to run through our, our, our facilities and not talk much on this. School of Engineering. I could send I could send this this to Eniola to share with students to in case they just want to look at it themselves. Um, so that's our School of Engineering, our School of Humanities. Here we have um, mass communication, politics, and international relations. Um, we have journalism and media communication. Um, our school School of Humanities. Here, um, students can take combined courses in humanities, so they can blend a course with other other courses so they have an option to take um, French, German, Japanese, um, Mandarin and Spanish. And again it, it helps we don't want to just speak one single language or two languages. I wish I had that opportunity growing up um, I would have jumped at it and that's our school of astronomy, physics, mathematics and that's the course we have there. We have school of physics um, okay so let's just run and that's our medical school. Um, so I always encourage students to take courses in pharmacy, pharmacology, um, uh, medical sciences. Of course, not medicine because it's quite difficult to get into. But we've got loads of schools um, that you can choose from. And our school of education, you could take early childhood education um, and education studies for undergraduate. And this, again, like I said earlier, is one of our best sellers, and that's the School of Health and Social Work. So people thinking to go on to do um, nursing or social work, where the right people to come to, um, what you would have to do is you'd have to do an interview and pass the interview. Without passing the interview with the School of Health and Social Work, you wouldn't be admitted onto this course. Again, you do not need IELTS for nursing, but you do need IELTS for um, social work. Again, if you have um, you don't have the IELTS, we will be able to make available a free test for you for the versatile person's test. And then we have the School of Creative Arts. For School of Arts, we always encourage students to have their portfolio ready available. Available. Some students don't know how to put out together their portfolio. We have all the links on our YouTube page. So we've created links for all the ways to write your, put your portfolio together because they, they expect that anybody coming to this school are well-groomed and then they, they want them to have like some knowledge before coming in. So you can go onto our YouTube page to find all these things. Um, our student experience has been super amazing. And what we do, we, we get lots of student feedback and that's why we have lots of students coming to the University of Hertfordshire. Um, and that's it. I think that's about what we have for the University of Hertfordshire. And again, for getting jobs, I said it earlier, um, we will, you can talk to our careers counseling at the university, it's on the college link. They will help you through, um, through the process. Um, our tuition fee is 13,513,000 per year. International students get up to 2,000 pounds of tuition fee. We, we do what we call the early birth discounts. Now we're going to start the clearing discounts starting from 1st of July. So for students who are in clearing who had not gotten the offer letters, they would still benefit from the early birth discount. And um, of course, if you graduate from the University of Hertfordshire and want to go on to do your master's, you get the 20% alumni tuition discount. 
we have lots of flexible discounts which is available to international students, so it shouldn't be any problem. Just come to us, and I will tell you what to do. You can apply directly um, using the uh, application. We have two applications, so when you're applying, please do not go to the cost page application. It makes it really difficult. You can apply through the Gecko link, which um, Eniola already has, so he can send it to to you um, to make an application. And the, if the process is quite easy. Um, I'll take you through. I, I do send emails to students about the process from the start to the end. So there's not going to be any issues. Now, again, what I encourage students to do now is because of the period, it's close to the time when people are going to start making applications. So I'll, I'll um, tell parents that from, from July, they should start putting finances together. Um, it's very, very important. Um, the finances in the right account. Um, students should start thinking about doing their TV test now um, and all, since um, students' classes will be, will be resuming, resuming in October. And that's our entry requirement. I'll send this off to Anyola so you can work with it. If Thanks. you have any yeah. follow up with every of our, um, our social media pages. Thank Thanks. you so, so much for having me this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Bolanle. Thank you so much. Um, she will definitely have a slide shared with us, so we'll be able to pass it around to um, prospective parents or students who will be willing to have a slide. Thank you. So um, I would welcome University of Portmouth, Jenny, to have a ground to speak with our students and uh, present our slides. Thank you, Jenny. The floor is yours. So, Balanley, please, you would help us um, stop your screen, stop the screen sharing. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, actually. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, I think I did that. Okay. Is it stopped? You, okay, um, just um, let me help you out here. Yeah? Okay, I've done it for you. Oh, thank you so much, Anil. Okay. So, Jenny, you have the you have the floor to share your screen. Thank you, Eniola. And awesome. um, let me see. So, I, you can see my my screen now. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> so, um, how far? My name okay. is Jenny Hyde. I work for the University of Portsmouth. And my colleague Chinello Conwea is joining me today. Um, Chinello is based in Lagos, so she would be the person that comes to see you um, under normal circumstances. Um, and she's your point of contact. But I work very closely with Chinello and said I would be able to present this today. So, first off, let's see the next slide. Um, I'm very proud to work for the University of Portsmouth. Now, I don't mind talking about league tables and the fact that we're Teth Gold as well, um, because we're ranked 21st in the UK. Now, there are two main league tables in the UK. There's the Guardian, which looks very much at employment, practical courses, the internships, and that side. So I think the Guardian league table is, is important, particularly for the bachelor degree course students, because this looks at the, um, the salaries, the, the employment opportunities, whereas the other league called um, Times, that focuses a lot on the research side of things. So for postgrad, um, PhDs, very useful source of information, but I really strongly believe that league tables are important. So do have a look at The Guardian, where we're ranked 21st, and there are about 160 UK universities. So we're very proud of that. Now, that um, is reflective of our student experience and the courses that we offer. So Portsmouth is a multi-faculty university. That means we have about, well, we have five faculties. We do business and law which Faculty of Business and Law, like it says in the name, you find your accounting, your finance, your business, marketing, law, law with business, law with international relations courses. We have the Faculty of Creative and Cultural Industries. That faculty is where you'll find your media courses. If you wanted to study film or photography, architecture, the creative subject. Humanities and social sciences is where you will find courses like criminology, 
um, international relations, which is very popular, politics and so forth. And then the other two faculties, science and technology. Now, for science, I would say Portsmouth strengths um, lie in the environmental science courses, the geology, the engineering geology, um, coastal marine and marine resource management. And we're very popular with the Nigerian students and indeed the sponsorship bodies for that reason, reason because we have some very specialist and very sought after courses that employers are seeking students to, to go on and work in. The other area that we're very strong in in science would be sports science, psychology. Um, we do biomedical science, we do pharmacy and pharmacology. Uh, we do not do medicine though. So we don't offer the medicine or the nursing courses at the University of Portsmouth. But for subjects allied to medicine, we do. And finally, the Faculty of Technology, which is where you'll find your engineering courses, your computing, your civil engineering, and so forth. We have over 430 degree programs, and we have, um, I would say 99% of the courses have uh, an internship or work placement. Now, what that means, when I say 99%, not all of them, we have a couple of courses which are integrated masters. So for example, M Farm Pharmacy. That's a four-year course because it incorporates your bachelor's in pharmacy plus the one-year master's. To become um, a qualified pharmacist registered with the UK's General Pharmaceutical Council and many others worldwide, to become a pharmacist you have to do four years and that is why the integrated masters is there for students that have done foundation or A levels. Now the entry criteria for my university for students from Bridge House College. Now for a bachelor's degree it will vary from 104 to 128 points at A level which would be BCC to ABB. We generally will look at around 60% in your foundation year. Certain courses, for example, the M Farm Pharmacy, because that's an integrated master's, they would be looking for more like 65%. Now, if you don't quite get the grades in your A-levels or you haven't done appropriate subjects for your course, you can look at doing our international year one, which incorporates a foundation with the study skills and year one. So you would do one year with our partner college, ICE, and progress on to year two of your bachelor's degree. I must stress, this isn't a regular foundation. You would do your foundation as normal at Bridge House, but it's an option if you haven't got the, the, the grades to get onto your chosen degree in year one. You don't want to are compromised by going to a lower ranked university and you don't want to pay an extra year of tuition fees. So the international year one is a fantastic um, course for those types of students. The language criteria for the University of Portsmouth, yes, like most UK universities, we will accept WIAC or NECO grade C or above. Alternatively, if you've done IGCSE English, we again need a grade C, O-level English. We do look at the the syllabus you have studied though, so we do need the confirmation of that. However, due to the pandemic, we do understand that in some cases, if you didn't get the grades in your WIAC or NECO and you need an IELTS and the IELTS test centers are shut, we can also accept Duolingo tests as, long as, as well as various other um, English tests. So you can take the Duolingo test online, um, we would send you a prepaid voucher, so you don't have to pay anything for that. The results would come directly to my university, and then I would get in touch with you to arrange um, a short, informal spoken chat. So we've got that evidence of your spoken English. Now, the tuition fees at Portsmouth, these are the, the gross fees. Every self-funded student at the University of Portsmouth will qualify for a the, the Vice Chancellor's Global Development Scholarship, discounting your fees by £1,600. So every student, regardless of means or merit, will get that. Um, now that would reduce your fees to from around £12,700 
um, for our classroom based course business finance architecture to 14,800 for a lab based course. Now to secure your place on our course and for us to issue you with your CAS, we need a deposit to confirm that. Um, for those parents out there who are looking at budgets, so at the University of Portsmouth, a bachelor's degree is three years and it usually has a one year paid internship. You don't pay the tuition fees for your child's internship year. Please bear that in mind. Um, there's a placement year fee of 2,500. So budget for three years of tuition fees, one year of internship. Yes, we also offer scholarships. We have the Global Academic Merit Scholarship, which is a £5,000 discount, but unfortunately, like Kent, we have passed the deadline on that. But all students who are self-funded, who haven't been awarded the Merit Scholarship, will get £1,600 discount in their first year study. So those of you who are thinking about 2021 entry, please do have a look at the Academic Merit Scholarship. Um, it's £5,000 and we have five, uh, a number of those that are allocated to specific countries in Africa. Not every country would get them, but Nigeria definitely would. Also, if you were thinking about a postgraduate, you'd get a 20% discount after that, after your bachelor's progressing. So it's worth thinking about for the future. So applying to Portsmouth, I would recommend you either apply directly to us via our course page, very simple, very straightforward, or you can go through UCAS. The best thing to do is liaising with Chinello. Um, so I've put her email address there, but like the others, I'm, I've shared this presentation, so you will have access to the contact details. So don't worry about scribbling them all down now. Um, like other universities, we have fantastic facilities. And that's one of the, the key things about a UK education. We have a fantastic school of law and we have our own mock courtroom where the students will be studying or getting practice in, in defense with prosecution. They'll be working in collaboration with other courses as well. I was talking to someone yesterday on international relations and he's been using the, the courtroom as well. So lots of different courses will use that. We have the geotechnics lab, the language lab, if you want to do it, a second language, motion capture, laboratories, Many students will ask me about working during their studies. Yes, you are allowed to work for 20 hours per week during term time. And the minimum hourly rate for an 18 year old is six pounds 15 per hour. But you shouldn't be depending on that for your living costs. Treat it as pocket money. Now, after you graduate, we've got a fantastic careers office. We will support you in looking for graduate jobs. We will help you with your CV, your interview guidance. We also do the subject specific careers fairs and you have access to this service for five years after graduation. Accommodation at Portsmouth, again, like my colleagues at the other universities, guaranteed in the first year. Now for that, we do need you to select us as your firm choice. Now Portsmouth is a city university. That means we are not located in the suburbs. You don't have to get a train to get to Portsmouth. The accommodation is all within 10, 15 minutes walk. We have about 250,000 people um, on the unit of the, we have about 250,000 people at, in Portsmouth. It's an island city, very, very safe, um, easy to get around. It's not so big that you're going to have masses and masses of people. And in fact, we've got very low COVID rates, which, you know, is, is a bonus. It's not like one of these great big cities with huge people, huge numbers of people. So the prices start at £99 a week. That would be for a standard self-catered, um, a standard self-catered room in your halls of residence. Um, could I ask you to put, go to the next slide, please, Eniola? You're controlling my screen. Um, next slide, forward. Is that it? Um, I, oh, okay, so the university, so Portsmouth, to be honest, we're not the biggest 
football club in, in the UK. We're not no Aston Villa or Manchester United, but we are, as the university, the football club's main partner. So that gives you fantastic work experience, internship and placements for students across so many different courses. So there's a lot of opportunity coming from that. So if you've got an offer with us, you should be looking at accepting it, emailing any outstanding documents, um, pay the deposit, and we can start issuing CASs to students with unconditional offers from the second week in July. Now, I wanted to cover the COVID. It did give us Wahala, right? Okay, so the COVID, the key pre-arrival changes, instead of starting in September, we have postponed our start date to October the 5th. We have made our deposit 100% refundable. Previously it wasn't, now it is. I mentioned the language tests. We'll be doing virtual pre-departure briefings. And like Kent, we also have a virtual open day taking place next on the 2nd and the 4th of July. Do look at our coronavirus FAQ pages for further information. Now, we're going to be talking about blended and connected learning for the period up to Christmas. So over since we closed on the 16th of March, we've closed our campus down. We've been phasing returns. So we've been doing the, um, we've been getting the campus prepared for you to start. And we're hoping that you will be able to be with us by the 5th of October to start your studying. However, if borders are closed, if you're not comfortable traveling by air by then, we can deliver your course online up to Christmas. Um, any face-to-face -face activities need to be um, conducted that's most safely for staff and for you. So there will be a move to live stream streaming with lectures um, where it's not going to be possible for certainly for the first teaching block. Um, I need to move on to the next slide, please, Eniola. Um, can I? Could you, um, you've got control of my screen, so um, I need you to move. Okay. So we're, we're in very COVID friendly. We're putting, we're, we'll be doing the, the intensive cleaning doors, handles, stair rails, where students are going to be using that most commonly. Communal areas, that's going to be deep cleaned daily. We'll be using protective screens where there are face-to-face -face interactions. Lifts will be restricted, one-way systems, hand sanitizing stations, temperature scanning, and signs and floor mark markings to help you get around safely. Like Eniola says, it is a new way of learning for us all. Um, so we're gonna make sure that you have access to your course tutors. You're going to be able to ask them questions. It'll be live teaching and also engagement with students through online chat and forums. Lectures and large group teaching will be recorded. It might take a session or two for you to get used to it, but we're still confident that you're gonna have a great Portsmouth experience. The practical be delivered in much smaller groups. Your personal tutor will help you with adapting to the new way of learning. Um, and we're quite confident that we've got everything and we're getting everything in place. Like um, Charlie from Kent said, we've got a lot of staff on campus now preparing for you. Um, we can, if, if you've got an offer with us and would like to have a chat with your academic, the course leader beforehand, we can also set that up for you. So um, the other information we are preparing for, late arrivals, normally if you can't get there in time, you'd have to defer. That's not going to be the case. We can't offer you a January start, but we can offer you teaching from um, when you start in October or when the course starts in October. We'll be sending you further details about how to get, how to register, get your student card, whatever computer software and equipment that you'll need, that's all going to be worked out so you won't be at a disadvantage. So the university has also been very in, um, involved in the fight against the pandemic. Um, we've been producing the laser cut face shields for healthcare professionals and 
doing COVID um, samples in the microbiology unit. This is our laser cut face shield that we've been developing. It's, we, we've been giving out, I think, 2,500 to NHS and key workers throughout the, um, throughout the pandemic. So, you know, I guess the support that we're putting in, into place, we're, that's been there, but it's having to move online now. So we've still got the well-being, we've got the multi-faith chaplaincy, you've got learning support tutors, academic skills support, career support, support. the post-study work visa will still be going ahead. So even if you cannot arrive and start your course on campus in the UK, um, in October, even if you're not there, as long as you're in the UK by April 2021, you will still be eligible for the post-study work visa when you graduate. We have a university surgery on campus, which during the first few weeks of term, we really do encourage our students to engage with and to register because obviously as a tier four student, you have access to the National Health Service. Um, there is a surcharge with your visa, but it's something that is available. And it's another reason why the UK is an important place for you to study. So we'll support you on your student journey. We're very conscious that you will need this extra support and your mental and physical well-being is very important. So there's those side, that side of the support is also available. Now, this is our contact us. I mean, Really what I wanted to say to you today is that if Life Day show you pepper, the University of Portsmouth will make pepper soup with it. So have a look with us. Um, Chinello and I are always very, very happy to have a chat and to talk with you um, on a one-to-one -one basis. If you have any questions, please get in touch. So that's, that's yep. me, that's Portsmouth. Thanks. Good. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Jenny, and um, you've been able to pick some some pigeon English. So <laughs> keep it up, keep it up. That's well said. Thank you. You do well, sir. You do well, sir. Okay. Thank you. So um, we have Coventry University who would be giving us um, their presentation. Then after Coventry University's presentation we will have um, an open mic to ask our questions to our speakers. Thank you. You're on, Mr. Kirian. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kirian, in country representative for Coventry University. Mr. Nilo, can you see my screen now? Yes, I can, I can. Uh, oh, okay, so um, I'll just walk us through the okay. application process and um, entry requirement, our uh, plan for uh, post-COVID, hopefully, and uh, accommodation, scholarships, and all of that. So um, first off, we are in city of Coventry, um, just 25 minutes from the Birmingham airport, and um, about an hour from London, um, is a city center university. Um, we have three academic sessions in a year. Um, for undergraduate students, uh, we have generally we have September. We just have few courses in May. Then we have four campuses in the UK, one in London, um, the major campus in Coventry, um, then um, a campus we call CU Coventry, also in Coventry, where um, we teach students with um, lower grades. Then we have a campus in Scarborough, which is about um, two hours from um, Coventry. Our faculties, we have um, the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, Faculty of Business and Law. We have Faculty of Health and uh, Life Sciences. Faculty of Engineering, Environment, and Computing. I will just highlight some um, major courses uh, we offer. Have BA Fashion, uh, BA Graphic Design, Architecture, Illustration and Animation, International Relations, Business Management, Finance, 
um, LLB law, then um, BSC aviation management, ethical hacking and cybersecurity, games technology, adult nursing, biomedical sciences, um, physiotherapy. Then um, let me quickly jump into the uh, entry requirements for um, Nigerian students, you have to be at least 16 um, to join us. Then um, uh, A-level requirements is from um, ABB to BCC, depending on your course of interest. Um, I would like to mention that we are very, very flexible when it comes to um, entry requirements. So we deal uh, on case by case basis. So um, we don't have a general um, strict entry requirements for students. So we'll take a look at your um, qualifications, then the admissions team will make uh, a decision. Um, we accept the A-level and your foundation from um, Bridge House College. Uh, we'll also take a look at your um, YEC result if um, need be. Um, then for our English requirements, we accept at least a C6 in English, um, in WIAC or NACO and um, IGCSE. If you don't have those grades, we can um, also do uh, a free English language test for you, Coventry University English language test. You don't have to pay for that. Just um, speak to Mr. Eliola, then uh, we'll book you for that. Um, we have scholarships, of course, um, at Coventry University, uh, automatic scholarships of at least £2,500. We'll take it out from your tuition. You don't need to um, apply for that. Then for accommodation, we have accommodation in school. Um, is advised uh, that you stay in school, as um, Bolanle mentioned, you we advise you to stay in school for your first year uh, because you're new to um, the environment. You stay close to your classmates, uh, make friends before you can plan to move off um, campus or go stay with family friends if you if you plan to. Uh, our accommodation is within um, the university, very, very close, just five to 15 minutes walk, um, you're in school. Um, and that, that will help you, especially in the first year. And um, you know, coming from um, a country with a different weather and all, um, you won't have the risk of um, missing lectures and all. Um, uh, as I've mentioned before, we have a January intake. Um, what this means for you is if you're not able to come in this September, you can join us in, in January with most of our courses run in January, apart from um, LLB law and um, a few courses. Our plan for um, the September intake, um, we still plan to go ahead with the, um, our September intake. We plan to start on the 7th of September. Uh, uh, we, we are going to be um, using the blended learning as most um, uh, reps have mentioned. Uh, we plan for at least five hours contact um, at the campus. That is um, in line with uh, the government regulations when um, they are released. And um, I will quickly talk on the um, uh, few selling points at Coventry. Um, we are ranked 15th on the Guardian League table. 97% um, of our graduates proceed to immediate em employment or for further studies. Um, we have gold rating in teaching excellence framework. We have a dedicated team for, uh, to help students for placements. So, um, and our students don't pay for that. Our students don't pay for um, extra year uh, placement. So if you want to study without placement is three years for all of our classes. And um, if you want a placement is um, four years for undergraduate studies. And for our placements, you can go, you can take that in the UK or you can go abroad. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't need to 
to pay for it. And if you want to continue with us at the uh, postgraduate level, you get up to 30% discount if, if you want to um, do your master's. Because, uh, our entry requirements is very, very, very flexible. We look at your grades and we advise on um, alternative courses if you don't meet the grades of the, uh, the courses you um, the course you plan to study, we advise on the alternative um, course you can study with us. Then it, um, I will also mention that we have a very vibrant Nigerian community in Coventry. So you do not need to um, um, worry about going to a, um, a different environment. You will see a lot of Nigerians, you feel at home, um, you can even um, run for uh, posts at the student um, union um, um, elections. So um, then if you have an offer with us, if you hold an offer with us, I will advise you um, quickly submit your judgments and um, pay your tuition um, deposit as soon as possible because uh, the way things are going, it might it might get very really really uh, busy in in September or before September in August with the two back classes tests with the visa application and I would also like to um, advise that you don't plan for um, the priority and super priority visa application that because that most likely might not be available this. Um, this time around. Um, I'll share our contact details um, for if you have uh, further inquiries. And of course, you can always speak to Mr. Inela if you have um, more questions and um, we'll help you with answers. Basically, um, for A level, I would like to mention for A level, okay, I've mentioned that for foundation is 55 to 60%. So, and like I also mentioned earlier, is we are flexible. So if you, your grades in one um, um, result is not acceptable, we consider the other one and we'll also go as low as looking at your, um, your YF results too. Um, this is the, the flow chart you apply. Um, most, I know most of the students in British Arts College apply through EU card, but you can always put in a direct application um, with uh, Mr. Inola, you just fill the application form, submit your academic documents, and we'll make a decision and send you your offer letter, um, which is uh, pretty quick for us. I'll do that within a week. Then um, send you your cast letter. We are sending out cast letter starting from next month, um, July. Then uh, we'll proceed with um, visa applications and, and all. So if you have further questions, um, we'll be here to take your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Korean. Thank you for your presentation. So we are back to the floor for um, the Q&A. A couple of questions have been asked and um, it has been sent via chat, but anyone who would like to ask direct questions can just indicate by raising their hands virtually, then I would um, be able to allow you to um, speak the your mic. The first question I have here, um, well, this is for everyone. And they asked, are there job opportunities available in the UK after graduation? what are the chances of getting permanent residency from the UK government? So, um, can, who will be able to answer that for us? You can unmute your mic, so um, you will be able to answer that and um, we hear you. So, Jenny, do you want to talk on that, please? Sure. Um, so, the UK, last September, we the government announced that um, students on a, a UK Tier 4 visa would be entitled to stay in the UK after they graduate for up to two years to work and gain work experience. 
So that post-study work visa, we have had confirmation that that will be going ahead. Normally, it wouldn't have applied to people who are doing distance learning courses, but due to the, the pandemic, um, the UKVI have lifted that restriction. So if you're not able to start in the UK, providing you're there by April 2021 to start your course or reconvene your course, then you can still apply for the post-study work visa. Now, um, for universities that have internship years, I do encourage students to take, the, take advantage of that internship because that gives you an extra year where you're gaining that commercial corporate work experience or networking, um, you're building your CV. So when you come back, you study for your final year, then you graduate, you're in a better position than if you hadn't got that CV in UK work experience. Obviously, there's no guarantees. However, um, if you've got your CV up to date and engaged with your university's careers office, they should be able to help you with developing a CV, um, producing, doing the skills that employers want, that's, that will help. Um, so yeah, I, there's no guarantees on in terms of whether you can stay in the UK beyond your post-study work visa. Um, I mean, you know, you're talking sort of six, possibly seven years down the line. So who knows? Um, but it may be possible if, you, if you've got a, a job with a company and you, your employer wants to keep you, it may be possible. Um, it, it's, nothing's guaranteed. Thank you. Any of my colleagues want to add to that? So just to add to um, Jenny's um, comment on this, uh, there are no guarantees for job anywhere in the world. Good. Whether you studied in Nigeria or wherever, I think the key thing is in being smart and taking advantage of relationships you've got. Uh, like Jenny said, and uh, like I said in my presentation, during the um, internship year, the work placement year, you've got um, the opportunity to make all the contacts in the world to secure a place um, after your study. So um, no university is going to promise that um, at the end of um, your program, they are going to put a job in your hand. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in Nigeria, it doesn't work in UK or anywhere in the world. So the students have to take that responsibility to uh, build their CV, take advantage of the support they can get from the university. All universities in the UK have got great career support for students. So you have to take advantage of that and then um, create the future you deserve. But the UK you. government has made it easy for you with that legislation that you can stay back for two years after study. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much. Then um, another question has to go with um, uh, regarding, can you confirm if schools allow parents get results of their words while in school? Some schools only allow children get results and not parents. Can you please shed more light on this? Um, let me put that to Balanli because um, she can, let, let me put a, a mother figure as an African and you know what parents are expecting. So from your perspective, can you shed more light for us? Okay. okay, from my perspective, I'm sure parents will not be happy to hear what I'm about to say. Um, if a child is over 18 years old, um, they will need to take permission, you know, to share the results of the word with um, the parents. As long as they're below 18 years, I'm sure that some schools will be able to share as long as there's a consent. Uh, but for my university, if you're below 18, we would not share content because of the G G D GDPR, that's that data protection. And so, yes, I understand parents are not happy. Some parents come to me to say, oh, but I'm paying the fees. Wouldn't I be able to get um, my, my child's um, results? I just honestly cannot say anything about this, but it's just a process. I don't know if you worked with other universities, but that's how it works. Yeah, just so hard, um, Bolanli. Um, there could be an um, exception to that. Um, in my previous rules with um, DMU and Cranfield, um, I had a situation where um, a parent wasn't hearing from the son. 
and um, this parent did everything possible and um, to get information regarding the son. The son wasn't talking to him. Um, he wasn't sure if the son was safe. And at the point, uh, he wanted to know uh, um, if the student was actually enrolled. Yes, we confirmed that student was enrolled. We wanted more information. There were, uh, we had lots of back and forth. By the end of the day, um, we had to, the, the, university's, uh, the university's admission service had to use their discretion. What did we do? We checked um, for the details of that parent. Was it the one that paid the fee for that uh, boy? And we confirmed um, the payment was from his account and all of that. And uh, we asked him to write an official letter stating why. And then again, to provide um, the birth certificate and everything linking in that is actually the dad to the boy and all that. And then, so on a case by case basis, um, there could be exception, but generally um, all information will be provided to the students and not to the parents. Okay. Jenny, am I right? And uh, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, certainly. Um, and again, it's really reiterating what Bolanle and Babs have said. There are quite strict rules. There's quite strict legislation in the UK that governs how we can share the data of our students. And without their direct consent, we are not allowed to share any of the information we have with them with anybody else, even if that's a parent. Um, so unfortunately, in terms of their results, at Kent, they're all sent to them electronically through the um, main student portal. And that is how they're accessed and only they have access to that. And we just are not allowed to share results with anyone else, unfortunately. Obviously, if you know, you're having difficulty contacting your child at any point, we would say to get in touch with the international team because then we will start mm -hmm. making sure that they're being supported, that they're being looked after, that we have regular contact with them and that if they are struggling at all, if there's anything that they find a little bit difficult and obviously they need a bit more help and support that we are there and that we're intervening and being proactive and supporting them and, you know, making sure they're getting in touch with you and communicating with you as well. So we'll, we're there to support, but we just can't share that information, I'm afraid. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Another question for Kent, someone is asking, why does Kent not offer BA psychology? So we offer BSc psychology. So the difference between a BA and a BSc is down to the content of the program. A BA is a Bachelor of Arts degree, a BSc is a Bachelor of Sciences degree, mm -hmm. and it tends to depend how the university teaches it and exactly how much content there is. Our BSc degrees are accredited by the British Psychological Society as well. Um, there are some of the highest quality psychology degrees that you can study in the UK. Um, whether a university teaches a BA or a BSc in a subject is down to that university and how the course is created and how the course is designed. So it's due to the science or the humanities content. And we would usually argue, certainly at Kent, that psychology is a sciences degree, um, a social sciences degree. So you might want to consider why you want to do a BA rather than a BSc in what is really a science focused subject. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, Bolanli, there is a question for you. Um, they want to find out, can a pregnant person who has uh, an, an offer for MSc adult nursing can they apply? How do they get application for their visas? How do they do that? They are pregnant and um, this person has gotten an offer for MSc adult nursing. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to say here, and this is what I say, I say to students. If you're pregnant, um, I don't think it's the right thing for you to come to school when you're pregnant because you won't be able to focus so much um, with your courses. That doesn't mean that you can't come to school if you're sure that you're able to, you know, take your classes and not be um, distracted with your, um, with your pregnancy. Now, again, you need to look at your EDD. If it's close to, because I've got people who call me to say, uh, my EDD is in December and they're resuming in October. That's going to be too close. It's going to be difficult. So I'd employ this 
set of people to just defer to the next academic intake, have their baby, take care of the baby for that one full year, and then come to school. Of course, if they're worried about, oh, can I bring my dependent to England, as long as you're doing a master's, you will be able to, um, as long as you have the right um, requirements, the, the living expenses that the UKBI has set out, which is £6,120 for dependent. So yes, if you're pregnant, please just, just defer to the next academic intake so that you're well, you, you, you take a look after your child and then come to school well for course, because nursing is actually very, very detailed. You'd have to go to classes, it's a combination of classroom teaching and um, practice. So they're placed, and when they're placed, they go to work from 8 a.m. to sometimes about 9 p.m. at night, it's going to be too cumbersome. So please defer if you're in this category and come next in day. I hope I answered that question. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Bolanli. Um, Charlie, there is a question here. I know you did mention about scholarship, but this parent wants to find out, is University of Kent offering any scholarship? I think the parent came late, so they would need to find out if University of Kent is offering any scholarship. So um, for our undergraduate students, so if you're coming looking at doing a bachelor's degree with us, our main scholarship scheme closed at the end of May. Um, so that is no longer open. Um, if you are doing your A-levels at Bridge House, then we do have um, a scholarship scheme for A-level students who achieve three A's in the A-levels or two A's in the B if one of those A-levels is maths or a modern language. And that's worth £2,000. Unfortunately, if you're not doing A-levels, then you are too late to apply for any scholarships this year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Austin, another question for you. Um, can you confirm that it's okay for a student to start school online in September and then travel to the UK in January? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, considering the, the um, COVID-19 um, regulations and all that. Um, so uh, if they choose, of course, we encourage them to start on campus um, by 21st of September. But if the student chooses to um, start in country, yes, um, we, they're allowed to do that. Um, okay. On their cast letter, we'll give them um, three months um, extension for them to arrive on campus. Yes, okay. they can do that. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Jenny and Atim, this question is for you. Um, we applied to Portsmouth alongside three others via UCAS. Portsmouth acknowledged receipt on April 9th and promised to reach us within two weeks. The university requested for more information on May 29th, which Bridge House has sent. We, will have, we, we still have no word on the application and it's delaying our decision via UCAS. Please help. So what's your response to that, parents? Please help. My response is, I am so sorry. Um, the reason for this, we introduced a new admission system last year, and we are finding that there are wrinkles. So basically, when an application is submitted, um, what we found is that if we have requested further information, um, it's not been updated automatically like we had expected. What I'd like you to do, um, if it's possible, can you get in touch with Chinello or I directly with the, your, your Portsmouth ID number? We'll look it up and we will fast track it through so a decision gets made within the next week. Um, I, I can only apologise. We have found this with certain applications where they've been caught up in this respect and I'm afraid it's down to technology, um, which isn't much of a excuse, and we do apologise. But please do get in touch with us, Janello and me directly. We'll we'll sort this out. Okay, thank you very much for that, Jenny. Um, the next question would be for everybody. Um, some parents would like to know what would be the process to get their cars because I know some schools require certain deposit for payments before they can get the cash, and um, while some universities do not. So please, um, let's do it alphabetically. Um, can um, Aston respond to this? 
Yeah, um, for housing, um, we expect you to pay a minimum of £2,000 um, deposit, uh, after which um, you're expected to complete the pre-cast questionnaire. So once you do that, the compliance team will um, contact the student um, and we issue the cast letter. So we accept £2,000 minimum deposit. Thank you. Kurian, please, next. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Babs. Yeah. Conventry, can you please answer that question? Okay, yeah. All right. At Conventry University, we have a minimum deposit of £4,000. Um, so if you paid that and you've submitted your academic documents and all other pending documents, um, you issue your pass, we are starting that um, next month. Okay, so they need a minimum payment of four thousand pounds before they can get the cars. Yes, please, four thousand pounds and submit all pending academic documents. Okay, good, good. Kent, Charlie. Hi. Right. So um, at Kent, it's a little bit different. We do not require any deposit. We do not require any payment in order to issue you with a CAS. Um, you do need to have an unconditional offer. So that means you need to have supplied any academic documents that we have asked you for, um, a copy of your passport, things like that. Since that you have the funds available to meet the costs of the school fees for one year, but also the costs of the um, have government mandated living expenses as well in a bank account or bank accounts that are either in the name of the student or in, in the name of a parent of the student and with an accompanying letter that states that those funds are for use for their education. It cannot be in an aunt's or uncle's account unless that person is the official guardian of that student. Um, but there's no actual payment required before the CAS is issued at Kent. Okay, so you, you're trying to let us know that before you issue the CAS, you need to check the bank statements and all that before you can issue the CAS? Correct, yes. Okay. And I think that goes alongside with um, Conventry. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Um, the bank statement is among the, the requirements of our conditions. So we we'll have to see the bank. Yes, 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 please. We have to see the bank statement before we issue Well, at Aston, uh, we yeah. don't ask the students to show the bank statement. Okay. Um, the compliance team will speak to the student. Once they complete the uh, pre-cast questionnaire, okay. uh, we'll use that to assess um, how eligible they are. The only exception to the rule is um, if a student has got a sponsorship letter from a recognized um, government agency, or a multinational, uh, they wouldn't need to pay any deposits for cash to be issued. So for example, if they bring a letter from uh, PTDF or NDDC or Shell or um, NLNG, uh, we'll, be, we'll be happy to issue them with cash letter. So we wouldn't require any uh, payment of 2,000 pounds. Okay, okay. Jenny, do you have any word for that? Do you require a bank statement before you issue CAS after deposit? Okay, so at the University of Portsmouth, um, we would make you a conditional offer um, that's conditional on completing our PBI or Tier 4 eligibility questionnaire, which is what it's a questionnaire looking at. Um, what passport you've got, what your um, status is, are you an international student, are you, how many years you may have already been in the UK for. So you need to complete that questionnaire, which there's a link in your offer letter that will lead you to that, or you can contact Janello or I and we can send you that link. Um, secondly, we ask for £3,500 deposit. Now this is offset against your tuition fees. And once that's paid, we can issue your CAS. The thing that I would add to what Charlie and Babs have mentioned about the bank statements, we don't ask to see the bank statements, but what I would say 
is that you need to make sure it's a personal account. The UK VI will refuse the visa if you use a corporate account or a business account. So it must be in the parent's name or the legal guardian's name. It cannot be in a sister, cousin, auntie's, anything like that. It must be in the student or the parent's name. Um, now, we don't check the, the bank statements ourselves unless you wanted us to. The one thing, the second thing I would also um, add is that with the bank statement, the UK VI want to see the money in the account for 28 days. Now that's your tuition fee balance. So your tuition fee, less any deposit, any scholarships or bursaries, um, plus the £9,135 that the UK VI state is required for your living costs outside of London. So the bank account needs to have that amount in for 28 days. Now the thing is, what you need to be mindful of is that 28 days that they consider, if you submitted a bank account that shows that amount of money, that full tuition fee plus, plus living costs, in an account from, say, the 1st to the 28th of July, that would be refused. The reason for that is because it's not 28 full days. Your bank statement should be 1st to the 30th of July. And because the first and the last day of the account isn't counted as a full day. So please bear that in mind. And this is why I do encourage our applicants to, to engage either with our a visa team at the university who can help you and they can double check your documents or with Chinello or I. So please do get in touch if you've got any queries about bank statements because trust me, if, if you're refused on your, if the visa is refused on the finances, on the bank statement in that cycle, it might be different this year because we're all doing blended learning, but it might mean in the future, if you didn't get your visa first time around due to financials, you may have to defer to the following year. So please do get, make sure you've got the financials, the bank statements correct. And that goes yeah. for all of and us, right? That's why it can, we have added that as a stage to the CAS process. Yeah. Um, because we actually, we don't want you to accidentally make a visa application using the wrong documents. And for that to take up your time, but for also that to take up funds unnecessarily. So that's one of the reasons that we do that check is okay. to make sure that you actually have the best possible chance of being issued your visa. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you. Um, I know some parents would like to have your contacts, but you would um, show it on the screen, then I would um, allow them to screen grab it before we close for this session. Um, the next question is for Mrs. Bolanle, but before she answers, I would like to put a disclaimer here that she isn't an immigration um, expert. So um, before you, before I read the question, so I'm going to read it for Mrs. Bolanle here. Thank you, Mrs. Bolanle. Now, does it mean the embassy will not deny visa issuance if I can cope? Does UK embassy have a specific role on age of pregnancy that would make them not issue visa? That's the question. Do you want me to read that again, Ms. Balanle? Mrs. Balanle, are you there? Okay. No, I, I got the two questions. Okay, so I'll yes, put I, I can hear you. you. Can you hear so, me? Yeah, we can. We can. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, thank you so much for the disclaimer. Um, I'm going to answer that question and go back to the cast because um, I didn't talk about it. It doesn't mean that when you do apply for visa, you won't get a visa. Please bear in mind that every student would have to do the TV test at the IOM center. And um, I had a student last year who had um, applied. She was pregnant, even though I discouraged her from applying. Uh, I think she was about six months gone, and then she did a TB test, and it showed that she was pregnant. I, I think it was part of the thing on the TB test. She went on to apply for visa, 
she paid for super priority at the time the super priority was available. And then they did call her for an interview. She never showed up. I don't know why. She never showed up, maybe because she thought, oh, they would, the reason why they called, because they, they called her for a face-to-face -face interview, which is unusual for the UK VI to do. They wouldn't call, if they're going to call for an interview, it will be by telephone. But they did call her after submitting the visa and doing the priority visa. They, inter they, call, they invited her for an interview to come to their office at the um, at VI. So again, it just might be because they wanted to be sure that she's fine, how heavy she's gone. So again, I would just advise you. But if you want to take the risk, it is your decision. You can go on if you want to. Um, Thank that's you. about so you, it. And then I'll go back to our... Um, yeah. yeah. So for cast letters for University of Hertfordshire, you need to pay a minimum deposit of £1,000. Even though on the offer letter, we have 5,000 pounds written on the offer letter. But specifically for Nigerian students and Ghana students who will take a thousand pounds minimum deposit. Um, they, however, need to show that they have the balance of their school fees and living expenses in their account for a clear 28 days. And um, like my colleague said, it has to be clear days. Some people put in the money and remove it on the last day of the 28 days. The visa will be denied we will conduct a financial check. So this is how it works for University of Hertfordshire. Um, the CAS team would issue the CAS. Before we get to the CAS stage, we go through a lot of process. We'll do either the credibility or what we call the sponsorship interview. And then the sponsorship interview, I cleared when I'm making live session. It doesn't mean we're giving you money. Sponsorship interview is that we're releasing our sponsor's license for you to go on to apply for visa. Now, we will conduct a sponsorship interview, and that interview is just like the credibility interview students will go through at the UK visa centers. So not only would students need 40 points to qualify as a tier 4 student, they need to pass the standard credibility interview. And if they do not pass that, regardless of having the 40 points, their visas will be denied. So we go through the sponsorship interview, where we find out that students have not been out of school for too long, we send them what we call the employment questionnaire, which I don't think would happen to undergraduate students because they've only just finished um, the foundation or the A-level. So if they go through the employment question, when we send these emails to students, we don't expect students to just answer using one-line answers. When you do that, they move you to sponsorship interview. So you write properly, you do proper employment questionnaire, listing out everything you've done, why you're choosing this course, why you have chosen the university and your career goal. Once a student passes that and has fulfilled all academic conditions, and that, that means you fulfilled all conditions, you've paid your fees, you've um, submitted all your documents, then we get to casting. Now, all castings for Nigeria and Ghana will be released to me. Okay. I am in charge of releasing cast letters to students. And because I'm the one conducting the financial checks, I would require, when I get the cast letter, I'd send an e I'll send an email to students stipulating how much they need. Of course, I'd send that email earlier so they're aware, so they're not just caught unawares. And then we send that email to say, we need this financial document. So it has to be, if it's the parent, like my colleague has said, if your parent is sponsoring you, they have to have your, the names on the bank statement, just as you have on your um, birth certificate. The names must tally. If a student is below the age of 18, they would need what we call the sponsorship letter and the consent letter. It's important that you're aware of this. You need the consent letter. If you're below the age of 18, you need a sponsorship letter, whether you are below the age of 18 or you're older. And if the money will be held in your account, then it should be in your personal account. Please take note, aside the fact that there are some accounts that will not be need used. We cannot take sponsorship companies' accounts. Take note. I've got some parents who have told me several times that, oh, I've sent my children abroad before. What do you mean, Bolani, by telling me I cannot submit my company's account? This is not our rule. This is the UKVI rule. So I always advise parents to go to the website or go to Google and check here for visa rules or UK guide, yes, it is all clearly written out there. 
So it's yeah. not that we are being mean or we need to just see your bank statement. We need to be sure. Some students get their cast letters and just want to go on to apply for visa. And that's why a school like my university will never release a cast letter to a student to just go and submit. Yeah. Some students yeah. will also submit their visa before three months. Now, the UKVI rule says you cannot submit your visa until three months to start date. Mm. Please yeah. take yeah. note of that. So regardless of when they're releasing your cast, you cannot submit three months and one week to start date. The visa will be denied. And that's why we would hold on to your cast letter and we won't stop start issuing cards. So our start date is now 26th of October. For University of Hertfordshire, we won't release cards until after the 26th of July. So we have the 20, we have the three months clear. And then we're sure that, okay, students are safe to apply. Do not forget, we would have to check your financial condition. You'll send it to me, I'll conduct the financial checks. We cannot verify this, so take note. We can't verify because we are third party. We can't ask the bank for verification. verification. But the UKVI will have to verify. Take note, the UKVI will verify the bank statement. We've had so many students that have gone on using fake bank statement. When a, fake, a student uses a fake bank statement, I'm not saying anybody will use it here, but it's always good to know because there are lots of people on the session. Yeah. If you yeah. use any falsified document, there will be a 10 years ban. It means you cannot apply for visa in the next 10 years, a 10 years ban totally. So some people say they are not aware. I mean, ignorance is not an excuse in law. And so that will not be taken into consideration. So please okay. take note. You have okay. your financial document to pay your fee. We give you your class three months to start taking that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for sorry, that. Um, okay, Mr. Babs, sorry, yeah. there's, a, there's another question for you, Mr. Bab. So once you talk, okay, I'll give you your question. Okay, just to add to um, what Balani said, Balani, thank you for that. Um, we need to make students aware, again, that um, they cannot, we, we try to discourage as much as possible our parents using our fixed deposit accounts. That's another area where uh, we've had lots of uh, back and forth and issues with parents. Some parents have um, presented to me in the past a uh, fixed deposit account that has um, over 100 million era in there. Yes, we've got um, enough money in there, but um, the fixed deposit account is very, very tricky, very, very tricky because um, we are not the one who are going to assess your visa application, like Bolanli said. The ECO who is assessing it may not really understand um, how to interpret that fixed deposit account. So it's um, advisable and wise for parents to present a savings account. That savings account can be personal or current. As much as possible, again, please avoid business accounts. Some parents have come and said, look, I'm the owner of my business. Uh, my um, money is in my business name. The question is, is your son or daughter an employee of that company? Number one. Number two, uh, why is that company sponsoring that child? So uh, we need to avoid this as much as possible. So just if you have money in your company's account or your fixed deposit, please terminate that investment and put it in a savings account or current account so the child can use for this application. So I think it makes it easier and saves you a whole lot of um, headache of back and forth with parents. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bab Mr. Babs. Um, there is a question for you. Um, please kindly ask Austin University why they cannot confirm an EU citizen with an EU passport to pay the EU fees like other two universities have done so far. <laughs> <laughs> so... It's on your uh, well. Um, I want to believe the parent that yeah, the parent that asked that question had been in touch with me, <laughs> and um, our compliance team had to um, escalate that to the compliance team, and the compliance team had um, ex exhaustively sent uh, um, an email response. What I would say here is, um, as long as the student um, has not lived in the EU territory. Uh, in the last six years or seven years, that student doesn't qualify for EU uh, fee status. So that student is going to pay the international fee. 
if he has lived in an European country territory in the last six years consistently, then um, it qualifies to pay the EU fee. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Babs. Thank you for that. So to all the participants, please, I my chat wiped off. So I would kindly request again that um, if I've not read your question, kindly resend it for me to ask the, the uh, guest speakers here. Um, so I, let me see. Okay, please, can you um, share your screen for me for our parents to screen grab your details, Mr. Babs? We'll do it in alphabetical order. So, Mr. Babs, please share your screen showing your details for for uh, parents to screen grab. Okay, so that's on screen for Austin University. Mr. Bab's details are being shown. Thank you, Mr. Bab. You can close your, close your, you can stop your sharing. Thank you. So Conventry, can you please share your slide showing your contact details for our parents? Okay, so that's for Conventry. Please screen grab it and um, have it saved on your phone for you to contact them. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Crean. Can you stop your share? So, um, Kent, Charlie, can you share your contact details for parents while we try to wrap up the presentation. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So please parents, you can screen grab. Thank you. So, um, Balanle, please. Charlie, can you, okay. Balanle, please, can you screen, share your screen? Now this is what I'm going to do because um, my okay just move it closer to your camera yeah yeah raise it up a little hold it firm yeah that's fine so parents please um, screen grab to get Bolanle's details perfect thank you thank you Bolanle all right okay so um who do we have Jen Kent, yep. Okay, she's done that. Um, Jenny, are you there? Okay, Chinelo. Okay, um, whilst we wait for that. I have uh, Mr. Ade Bajo raising up his hands. I don't know if you want to ask your question. You can unmute your mic, Mr. Ade Bajo. Okay, this is for Portmot. Their contact details. Um, so Chinello is based in Lagos at the okay. Navitas office on Pebby Road, and she can be contacted on WhatsApp or email. We've also okay. got um, our coronavirus FAQs, and we have just launched a page on student life in 2020, 2021, which has got a lot more detail for you to look at. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, I think that is a question here for, um, okay, Bolanli, please can you show your cards again? And uh, while you're showing it, another question will be for you. Do you have an info on or idea when the UK visa office will be open? You can share your screen. Jenny, can you stop your share? Can you, okay, let me do that for you. Don't worry. Let me do that for you. Okay, so Bolanli, please, can you do that again? Okay. Is that clear enough? Just hold your hand still. That's 080395. 3395. 3050. Yeah. Then the, our WhatsApp number is 080 1450. Right. And the email is b dot obadino. That's o b a d i n a at heads h e r t s dot a c dot u k. Thank you, thank you, Bolanli. All right. You're yeah, welcome. I I think I've been able to exhaust all the information or questions here. Yeah? So thank you once again for, uh, for being able to give out your time to speak with our parents, to all our guest speakers, and to all our participants, we welcome you, we'll actually welcome you to send in your questions. Uh, at Bridge House Counseling, we'll also um, have you, if you have any visa issues or visa or application, we will be in touch with you to provide such services. Well, yeah, and... Um, uh, so, thank you. So, once again... Does this mean... Oh, this this, once again... Does UK Embassy have any specific rule on age of pregnancy? Sorry, that will make them not to I don't know. Let me try and unmute. For next of the first question, Joanne, we have another question, but for Bolan Lee, but before I pass the question. Okay, okay. Are you, can you, I think that person wants to ask a question. Okay, okay, sorry. It was a little bit unclear. Mr. Olu, please, can you unmute your mic and um, please speak to your mic, please. Okay, I think you can actually. Um, Enola, yes. I think, um, I guess uh, Mr. Lu um, misinterpreted um, Bolanli's oh, response. Uh, Bolanli hasn't said to him that they cannot apply, and then we yeah. are not assuming the role of um, UKB. Yeah. Yeah. So, what Bolanli has said is um, just a hard advice, and that's the honest truth. Uh, if you are heavily pregnant, um, it doesn't make sense um, to go to the UK at that time because you'll be spending heavily on a nanny, getting a nanny, and it's a whole lot of distraction to studies. Yeah. So, uh, who makes um, the decision on who gets visa or not? It's uh, the UK VI, yeah. and um, the ECO we assess the application. And um, in the case she mentioned, um, they actually wanted to see the student face to face. Based yeah. on the uh, TB results, yeah. and then from my own experience, I think it's unlikely that the student might be granted um, a study visa to the UK. But it depends on the issue. So, yeah, and she's not. She hasn't said that that, uh, that student isn't going to be issued a visa. Yeah. yeah. So Mr. Okay. Alu should get it right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bar, for the clarification. We have a Thank parent, Miss Doctor Imosini, Doctor. Donald Demosini, please can you um, mute your mic and ask your question? We have um, you on board now. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, sorry, I'm joining a bit later. I've been, I've been at work. So please, could I just get the details of the contact person 
of uh, University of uh, Hertfordshire so that okay. I could. Okay, what I would do is I would allow her to type it. She's going to send it to everyone now. Um, I've made the chat public, so she will type and uh, you'll see it on your chat room. Okay, please. Thank you Thank very you, much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. So someone is asking, what is the visa process and uh, requirement for EU students? For EU citizens, they do not require visa. And I need a confirmation from my colleagues in here. Do EU yes, citizens... yes, they do not require a visa. Yeah. They do yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Just to um, add to that, okay. um, it was announced this week, and Charlie would probably be the expert being from the European University. Oh, but, beautiful. Um, yeah, beautiful. The, Charlie, can you? Think, uh, um, the, 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 the EU students uh, from enrolling in 2021 and beyond will not no longer be paying UK fees, but I don't have a lot more information on that because... I don't really do EU so much. Anyone else can add to yes, that? Um, Jenny, Jenny's Charlie, correct. Can we, can we allow Charlie? Yeah, Charlie. Um, yeah, that's that's quite a major announcement that's been made this week, actually. Um, it hasn't yet been very widely publicised. Um, I think it may only have been Thursday or Friday that it was actually published. Um, and I apologise, I've been on holiday, so I'm catching up. Um, and uh, it, it does mean that now um, there will no longer be a preferential rate of fees for EU students with kind of EU nationality. Um, they will be paying the international student fees, the overseas student fees going forward. So it will only be UK um, and Republic of Ireland nationals who are eligible for the UK rate of fees, which is the lower rate of fees. Um, as Jenny said, they haven't published a huge amount of information on that yet. Um, it's a fairly brief summary. Um, okay. but that is something to bear in mind. So for 2020, European nationals, European students are still eligible to pay the lower rate of fees, but from 2021, it does look like that is set to change. Okay, thank you. Thank you for Thanks, that. Thanks, Charlie. Sorry to put you on the spot. Okay. Don't worry, no, that's all right. That's fine. So we have um, two hands raised. Um, Mr. Francis Nwauche, please can you um, unmute your mic and uh, ask your question, please. Mr. Francis Nwauche. Okay, um, my question Sorry, is before for... Then, before, you, before, you, before you ask, after you, Mr. Steve Ayayi, you will be the next after Mr. Francis' um, question. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, my question is for Mr. Babajide. Um, the question is for, I've asked a lot about the scholarship I hear for all international students. I think it's about 2,000 pounds initially. While discussing with the admissions office, I'm, I seem not to get any clear response about how that applies to each student. So please, can you clarify that? Secondly, for the admission process after paying the the um, deposit and submitting some of the do documents ahead of time. What are the next steps to getting the unconditional offer? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Francis. Uh, sorry, um, I was the first presenter this morning and uh, I didn't want to take anyone's time. So I didn't go through my slide um, in the presentation. Okay, um, to go straight to your question, we have a number of um, scholarship opportunities for September. Um, the first is the Global Excellence Scholarship, which is between 3,500 to 5,000 pounds. Uh, the 3,500 pounds would be available to students who uh, finished with um, equivalent of 60% uh, in their foundation. Uh, for um, Cambridge A-level grades, um, we are looking at um, ABB, um, I said that for clearing, um, we are going to likely um, come down a little on that. Um, so that's the force, and this automatic, um, either 3,500 or 5,000 pounds. 5,000 pounds will be available to students who um, did very well. Maybe um, a student has three A's. They are here level in foundation. Maybe they have 80% um, or some 5%. They would have the 5,000 pounds 
automatic scholarship. Now, the other scholarships that um, have closed are the Vice Chancellor's International Scholarship, which is for eight thousand pounds. But no, that's sorry, good. sorry to break in. Mine is just the uh, when we did the international students. There's a scholarship that was mentioned about two thousand pounds when we came for Bridge House. Okay, for every international student. No, no, there's no the two thousand pounds. I wasn't at the Bridge House Fair. I sent a rep to stand in for me. I think I was out outside the country then. Uh, the two thousand pounds is the initial deposit. When you have an offer from us, you need to pay two thousand uh, pounds for us to be able to issue you with cast letter. So all our scholarship, the minimum offer we've got for scholarship is three thousand pounds, and that's the Global Ambassador Scholarship. I think um, the lady that represented me at the fair uh, went to that fair with um, the postcard for the three. No, thanks. I, I understand. Thanks a lot. I get I get already because we've applied for some of the scholarship. I'm just asking for that particular one. I okay. still applied. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Francis, and thank you, Mr. Babs. So, Mr. Steve, the, the stage is yours now. Please, can you unmute your mic and um, ask your question? Mr. Steve, aye, aye. I can see your hands raised up, and um, if you can unmute your mic, you can ask your question before we wrap up this um, webinar. Mr. Steve Ayayi, are you still there? Okay, I think um, it's all good. Thank you very much once again um, for your active participation. It's been very um, educating and informative. And um, I still put there that we are not visa, ex, um, visa, we are not the ECOs. So we do not issue visas, but we can only advise. And that's mm -hmm. what we are here for. And that's why we are um, giving this information to our parents and to all the participants. Miss Monica, Mrs. Monica. Yes. You can, you can, you, I see your hands raised up. Please, can you quickly um, ask your question yes. so we can call it a day? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. You're audible. Uh, just, yeah, just one more thing. As an EU citizen, obviously, he doesn't need a visa for now until January. I get that. Do we still need to do this screening as a criteria? or? Okay. Your question is, do you still need to do the tuberculosis screening as a criteria for EU citizens. Charlie, would you be able to talk about that? Yes, certainly. Um, no, the tuberculosis screening is only a requirement for those students who need a tier four visa. So if you don't need a visa, if, you have, if your child has a European passport and doesn't require a visa, then the tuberculosis screening isn't mandatory. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. So um, you do not need a uh, it's not mandatory, let me put it that way. It is not mandatory for EU citizens to um, take the tuberculosis screening. Anela, yes, I please. think uh, it might be worth um, checking, checking right? yeah. with the uh, visa and compliance team because um, this student is based in Nigeria. It's not based in an EU territory. Yeah. So the student um, has lived there for four years, five years, regardless of the fact that the student has got an EU passport, I think that student might um, be required. I, I, I think um, the visa compliance office um, should be contacted for clarification on that. Charlie, what do you, you think? Can, you can certainly check it, but to the best of my knowledge, we've never had a European student asked for any form of tuberculosis test. There is no mechanism by which to check that you know, when you come into the UK, if you've got a European passport, you've been traveling around Europe, um, they have no idea, the border officials have no idea which countries you have been in. Um, but please, if anybody else does know more than that, let me know, to the best of my knowledge. We've never had a European student requested. Okay, thank, thank you, thank you. 
thank you. Um, I still see Mr. Steve's hand raised up, but I think it's just one of his oh. systems doing that. Mr. Steve, you've unmuted your mic. Can you ask your question? Thank you. Uh, my question is, is uh, on the issue of bank statements. If you use a company account and the child is a shareholder or director in the company, is there anything wrong if the company is sponsoring her or him? <laughs> Number two, I'd like to have the contact for Aston University. So um, I'll, I'll leave that to Mr. Babajide to answer because I, I know I do face a lot of these questions and I know how it is. So let me just give you the honor to answer Mr. Steve and also provide what he also needs. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> this life really, and uh, <laughs> it reminds me of many times when um, you have parents sitting before you face to face. What? Uh, if this student is um, a shareholder in the company, uh, uh, well, I think I'm asking questions like if he's an um, active director or non-active director, doesn't really make sense. What I would um, advise Mr. Steve is, it depends on um, the um, business status of that company. Is that company sole proprietorship? or is it a limited um, liability company? If it's a sole proprietorship business, uh, it, it still, you, you can still dance around it a little because um, you as the sponsor would be the sole signatory to the account, okay? But um, if it's um, a case where it's um, a public limited um, company, it's, it's uh, a bit difficult. It's a bit different, and that's going to be queried by um, the UK VR. Okay, so okay. that's my position here. So I think, um, hello, Mr. Steve, if you, I can hear you drop me, if you drop me an email, if you drop me an email after this session, uh, I'll be able to give you a detailed response, and then we um, you connect great. you with our compliance team, yeah. and then we we'll look at your case on an individual basis. But um, if you go by the okay, books, as of now, um, it's uh, almost that's enough. Advised. Yeah. 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 Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you for that you. Um, well, well, and articulated response from Mr. Babs. Um, please, it, it's just a clear rule. Complaint account has its intricacies. So in a way to avoid it, simply make the font available in a personal account. If the funds are in the company account, it doesn't take you and it doesn't cost you to just transfer the money into your own personal account than taking a risk of a visa refusal. These are the things we do advise and we try to make it clear to parents to try and just make the visa process simplified it is very clear. It's, it, it, I think UK visas can be one of the easiest to get. So I will advise when you email Mr. Babs, I know Mr. Babs would also know the best way to handle this and we can take it off the um, webinar now. Thank you, sir. All right, please. Okay. Aston University contacts. Yeah, Aston you, University contacts. It will do that. It will do that. It will send it to you. Mr. Babs, can you just email your contact to the chat? I can see Mr. Olu here. Mr. Olu, please, can you, um, I think this will be the last yes. question for the day. Thank yes, you. thank you very much. Thank uh, you. I want to talk with particular attention to uh, Air Force Share. Okay. The 26th of July that Mrs. Bolanli mentioned for starting of a issue of a cars. Now, if I make the fund available in the account, uh, I really want to be clear. Is it to make the fund available before 26th and then, or is it to make it available from 26th, considering when we apply for visa? If I make the fund available, let's say, uh, from 1st of July, by 26th of July, it will be 20 days, not 28 days. We just the issue cards. And then, if the issue cards, we like immediately go ahead and apply for visa from that same day the issue cards. Or I really want to understand because from my own perspective, it might be uh, more than these 28 days. 
for this fund to be to be in the account because one okay. process follows another okay thank you okay. Ms. Bolin. you can listen to mrs Bolinley. thank you so much for the question mr Olu. and i'll just clarify this now now when i say that we're going to start issuing classes from the 26th of august and um, from 26th of july it doesn't mean that we're going to issue to everybody I've just said that that's the when we're going to issue classes. Now you need to also take into consideration that you need to fulfill your conditions. And one of the conditions for cash release is for you to show us a bank statement that is 28 days clear. Do you understand? So take for instance, what I've been telling students, the email I've sent out to students, start putting your funds in your account from the 1st of July. So by 28th of July, that's 28 days, 29th of July, do your final transaction. And then by the time, by that time, you already have your cast with me. And all I'm doing is I'm sending you your cast and saying to you, I need your cast to be like this. This is a particular amount I need in your, um, in your bank statement. I need you to send that to me. So that means I have your cast with you. You have your bank statement after 28 days. You send it to me. I send back your cast to you. Now, if you do not put your funds by the 26th, take for instance, and cast has been released, that will not be released to you. Do not forget. So if you put your money in on the 26th, take for instance of July, you then start counting from 26th to the 24th of August. And that's 28 clear days. That is when I would release your cast. So I'm only sending you an email to say your cast has been released to me for financial checks. Please send in your bank statement with the clear 28 days or 30 days. And then I'll release your cast. So do not forget, I'm not releasing the cast if you do not have the required amount of money in the required amount of bank statement for the required amount of time. Now, when the CAS is released to you, yes, you can go on to apply for visa once the UK VI centers are open. Please take note. Upon printing of your bank statement, it is only valid for another 30 clear days. So if you have your bank statement that is 28 days and you give it to me and you still hold on to your bank statement and maybe the UKBI has not opened and you just hold on to it, you cannot apply for visa after 30 days of the printout. Please take note. If it's after 30 days of the date of printout, then it becomes invalid. So I advise students, keep your money in your account. Do not touch it until you're sure that the UK VI is ready to open for students to go and apply. So you have 28 clear days for your 28 days. You have extra 30 days within which you can make your visa application with that bank statement. If after 30 days you have not submitted your bank bank account, um, your visa um, application, you have to reprint your bank statement. You have to reprint. Please take note of this. And that's why we're always very, very um clear on all the things that student needs and please always refer to the email if you're coming to UH I send lots of emails I have all these guides on my Instagram page on our um, social media pages I do lots of videos to clearly explain that the frequently asked questions they're all there go there and you find all this detail I hope I answered your question yeah thank you you thank did. you you did. thank you thank you thank you thank you once again so um I wouldn't say again, but I think this should be my final say to say this officially um, webinar is coming to a close. I thank everyone for your patience and for the detailed answering of, your, uh, of the questions. And um, I know um, parents will be buzzing you to get more information. That's fine. We've made this channel available to them to interface with our partner universities and to get necessary information that they need. So once again, I thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. And um, I will be closing this um, meeting from my end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for organizing it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Jenny. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anila. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.